Livelli Tool sells a number of weather instruments that have a really nice fit and finish to them. They are analog with a reasonable accuracy and they are all adjustable. In this video I'll show you how they adjust as well as how they can be mounted in, let's just say, less than ideal conditions. So let's start at the beginning. They come with either aluminum bezel finish or with brass bezel finish and the three instruments in this case a barometer, thermometer, hygrometer measuring relative humidity, air ambient temperature and air pressure. So uh, with the two color finishes the three instruments have six part numbers in total. I just have the part number of one of them. That's how it looks like. That one up top, the 46K7023. They are fairly inexpensive too. A set of three costs around $45 or so. They come with a set of instructions which is very nice and it also tells you that these can be calibrated or adjusted and uh, also tells you mounting instructions. Right up there it, need, it, it says that they need a two and a half inch mounting hole. In my case I don't have a two and a half inch hole saw or uh, high speed uh, sawtooth bit or forstner bit. I have two and three eighths. So what do I do with the one eighth difference? I had to do a little shaving on the mounting ring. So this is the standard mounting ring and here is some of the shaved bits. It's no big deal, it was like three minutes. It's okay, they mount securely as is into a smaller hole uh, because now the hole size is 60 millimeters instead of 63 and a half. So two and three eighths instead of two and a half. They will still work with the, with the mounting rings because this is brilliantly designed that accommodates uh, life's events such as not having the right size of drill bit. So what do I have to punch the holes into the wood with? And this is a going to be, it's it's already finished, I had two of them mounted but then I thought, nah, you know, what do I do with this big gap in the middle? I think I can put the third one in and alas I can. They will just barely fit like so with, with barely any gap between them so my layout has to be really well lined up and it's critical that it be centered but it will it will work. So what do I have for making these holes? I have only a crude a really brute hole saw. Now this is not a low-end hole saw, nevertheless this is still a construction slash demolition tool that's made for speed not accuracy. As a result of that this is somewhat inaccurately made and its circularity is nowhere near guaranteed. So it's going to make a somewhat of an oval shaped hole or somewhat somewhat of an imprecise hole, maybe not oval shaped hole because that's just not possible. Okay, so oval shaped is pushing it, but in low end hole saws you might find that this is actually of an oval shape. So shape aside, the saw teeth on this one are also set with more or less precision by saw set. I mean that every I think this one has a wavy set so so uh, maybe not every second but uh, say two of them are sticking out to the left and the next two of them are in line and the next two of them are sticking out towards the inside and the next two of them are again in line the next two of them are leaning out to the outside and, and so on okay you get the idea I think this one has a wavy tooth set if you look at it somewhere there you can kind of see it and and the saw teeth are also just look at the amount of blackness on it where the white paint is missing so some of them are cutting more than others that's these three or four teeth are used more and then those ones are just in line and not much sticking out again so that makes the outside of the hole that one also makes the outside that one makes the inside those ones seem to be in line and they are uh, the white paint is not much worn off of them because they're just raker teeth. This one again is scoring the outside of the wall of the hole that it's making. Okay, you get the idea. So not all of them are set evenly. I strongly recommend that you 
actually use a four snare bit or a sawtooth bit however the mounting ring is so brilliantly designed that you can still mount your instrument securely into a hole that's made with a butchering tool like this so you can see that I still went from one side partially through, flip it around and finish it from the other side. Of course it was in a drill press so I flip the wooden piece around like so and it's centering itself around the bit in the center. <coughs> Nevertheless the sidewall quality of the of the hole looks like this. You can see I went to about this depth. It started to burn the wood. I had to clear the wood chips, flipped it around the other side and on the other side I went to this depth and this is where I was left with this little lip there about I don't know a quarter of a millimeter half a millimeter something like that so the two sides don't meet up exactly close enough because these rings will accommodate these differences if, although I have to admit with a round file I made it a lot nicer than it was so how do they mount with this ring if this ring is meant to fit a 65 millimeter hole and uh, sorry 63 and a half millimeter hole and now they fit in the 60 millimeter hole I had to make these rings smaller that's what you see here these are little off cuts because with a utility knife a chisel blade or a plane blade I think on the last one I just grabbed a plane blade I shaved off some of the mounting ring material this is clear PVC or or white PVC somewhat close to clear it's really difficult to see this excess material on it so you have to look at it in good lighting so let me try to get you a close-up what was cut away you can see that there are these raised ribs running on it four of them and I cut away half the ribs all four of them so if you can imagine these still being on them these cut off parts still being on them they were bigger so I made made it smaller so it fits a smaller hole okay I hope that makes sense it's really because it's nearly clear it's not it's really difficult to see it but that's how that's what I did you can kind of see it there behind my or in front of my finger there that this is half the original height so how they mount is fairly straightforward all of the instruments have some kind of ventilation holes or air access holes those are important so don't cover those holes with the tabs on the mounting ring the tabs are somewhat of a universal piece and they don't quite fit the spacing of these vent holes that means that if you can see one two there's one two and three of these vent holes so if you try to turn one tab to line up with the plastic bridge between those tabs the third one will be misaligned and you can't do anything about it and it's almost covering that vent hole so I kind of split the problem in half like so so that's partially open that's fully open and the last one is also partially open just like three quarters of it is open there and on the last one the same thing so about three quarters of it is open on sorry this is the last one okay so these two are somewhat looking alike all right but I don't put the ring fully on I start at the bottom and just put the instrument in also aligning it so if this is my mounting hole up top uh, this is the 12 o'clock position on it I want the letters on the barometer in this case in the 6 o'clock position so down there lining it up this way and just press it in place like so with a little bit of a little bit of wiggling sideways like so and it's gonna go in just like so it's a little bit sideways there as well 
and there you can see it it's almost in and nothing broke there so let's met some there that's how they mount so now it's flush okay the thickness of this board is uh, three quarters of an inch so that's 18 millimeters and a little bit of the back of the instrument is showing there about that much but uh, the, and the tabs are showing underneath from the side but nothing is showing from the face and the letters are at the six o'clock position nicely lined up and your vent holes are down here on this particular barometer uh, down there that's where these vent holes in the instrument should be i think this is a nice piece of maple or i think uh, alder maybe some such thing okay so that's how this one mounts and let's look at the adjustments so these are analog instruments they need to be adjusted and calibrated this one adjusts very simply with a screwdriver there to the back in the center not those ones those mount other things adjust it in the center where the needle is going to be affected this needle is fixed to the glass housing uh, I set it to 101.3 because that's standard air pressure at sea level and I live at sea level so I kind of need to see that right now we're having good weather with high temperature or what uh, high pressure system coming in or uh, being over us so that's how this one adjusts oh and forgot to mention this is also sensitive to vibration shaking and tapping so if you tap it sideways you can see the needle is going closer towards the 103 if you tap it just gently this way now it's 102.5 so just mount it hang it tap it gently wherever horizontal in horizontal position wherever it kind of the forces in it balance out that's where it will stay and then you can adjust it incrementally really gently what I do with the hygrometer for relative humidity and the thermometer for ambient air temperature I just grab the digital instrument with a uh, this one has missing the rest of the probe there but the instrumentation for uh, uh, temperature and uh, moisture content is there so right now we have 23 degrees C Celsius and 31 relative humidity percent so I nudge the needle until it shows or points at the 31 or roughly so on the back side here the needle can be adjusted the red one is not the needle what needs to be adjusted is the bracket through which that red pointer runs there you can see the bracket and I moved it one o'clock's worth of position so that means that say if this one is at 12 o'clock there it was at 11 previously and I had to shift it that way and that turn uh, say it was around 37 so that brought it down to 31 so that was my adjustment on this one and the thermometer adjusts with a simple screw at the back which is really difficult to see because it's deep but it's a slot there for the screwdriver slot screwdriver and I just made sure that it's showing the same as the digital thermometer 23 degrees for both of them this one has a traceable reasonable uh, accuracy so now my analog instruments show the same these don't need battery and once I'm done properly mounting these then uh, they will actually look good the hygrometers housing does not have um, cutouts in the housing it has an a back like so and it's just all gonna be exposed like so and and fits flush into this 18 millimeter thick board and the thermometer is gonna be sticking out a little bit just like the just like the barometer because the tabs are going to be holding it away from the surface so it's going to be something like that just barely in or barely sticking out maybe something like that so it's mm, yeah, the, the thickness of this board is not 
uh, enough or not perfect and this has vent holes just like the barometer has one two three in the six o'clock position here so that's how these mount in less than ideal conditions and that's how they mount period and that's how they can be adjusted they have reasonable accuracy and they most importantly look good especially so on a nicely sanded piece of hardwood